I think we should hoon it one last time. And just wants to blow that thing up. All right, so that's it. We just wrapped Hoonicorn vs. The World. But sadly, that means that's the last project that Ken's going to be doing with the Hoonicorn for at least the foreseeable future. You want to explain why? Well, my favorite car, too. That's tough. I think it's all of our favorite cars. But after 11 years, Ford and I are parting ways amicably. amicably. They're seeing other people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's cool. Like, it's an open relationship. <laughs> so, uh, But I appreciate the support Ford put behind me for all these years. Uh, it actually was great and being able to do projects like this and the Huna truck and the Fiestas. Big moment for Ken Block. Incredibly cool. to do with super rad but time to move on so today is my final time driving this car really <laughs> so i think we should hoon it one last time but before that i wanted to kind of talk about the history little, of this little car. memory lane go yeah. back through yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah this is like the equivalent of like scrolling through your ex's ig that's what we're doing right now yeah, just one, one last time before you hit that unfollow button. yeah yeah <laughs> just one last time before unfollow and block yeah. you gotta oh. double them up <laughs> here's the thing about the unicorn the two of us could talk for hours i'm more curious as to what john has to say about unicorn i what? mean for me because yeah, no, like yeah. yeah this was like when i got hired on gym seven had just wrapped and remember, I had my interview. And you go, want to see something cool? It sounded like something from like Stand By Me, right? So we go over this corner. Want to see a dead body? You guys want to go see a dead body? And he looks up and goes, look at this. <laughs> and it was just a fender. He's like, and he's like, we'll show you. And he pulled it off. And that's the first time I saw the car. And I was like, this is bananas. And that's my introduction to Hooney. That was like week one yep. working there. And this is personally my favorite car that Ken has ever built. Because to me, it's the most relatable. Because it's from the 60s. It's an American car. It's got a V8 in it. I mean, yeah, it's got twin turbos on it, but it's still like, it's the most aggressive looking car, the presence of it, it's muscular, it's all those things. It breathes fire. I just think that like V2 is also like equally as impressive because it's like, how did you take the craziest car and make it even stupider? You know, like you couldn't top it. Like the Unicorn was the best car there was and then add another two times the horsepower. So that's a good question. V1 or V2? Well, I think, I think v1 was a bit more relaxed and fun mm -hmm. right bigger power band and it had enough power v2 it just like everything it feels like wants to kill me <laughs> from the power to the fumes in my face it's like Making me pick which of my favorite children. It's not nice. Yeah, I can't do it. You can't do it? I think for me, aesthetically, I like V1 more. And originally, the V1, when we designed it, I wanted it to look like a Hot Wheels car you would play with. I agree, like, I, I, I enjoy that look, but it's actually kind of complicated. The other one is just like ITBs with, you know, a yeah, scoop. Yeah. It is so, like, Hot Wheels, yeah, you know, very like, simple, like, like that a, yeah, like that a kid would understand. Air go in, you know, like, <laughs> oh, high horsepower. Vroom, vroom. Yeah, you know, yeah. We talk about the design side, like I don't think we really ever dive deep into it, but so much work went into designing this car and there were so many different variations. We hired multiple artists. And in the end, it was actually Lindsey Ross who actually worked at Hoonigan and then went to go work at RTR, which is kind of funny because RTR was the one who were building this car. And we worked countlessly to like all the little stuff, like the fact that the fender, like the actual flare bolted on the whole way instead of like just having the bolts here. And when that, we did that, no one else was doing that. Like the idea that it was instead of like a full fender replacement, it just flanked the whole side. And part of the reason we did that is we didn't want like the heavy bolts around here that you saw on all the other cars. We wanted it to just feel like this big slab panel that went on. And think about how many renditions we went through for the scoop. 
like 20 different renditions. Like we built it out of cardboard. Like we did all these things because it was about just trying to get that look perfect. That was like somewhere between paying homage to like vintage racing and like vintage drag cars and all of that, everything that had scoops on it, but then also modernizing it enough that like it fit the rest of kind of what we were doing. The car was always behind schedule. We had these shoot dates that we were, everything was backed up against. So I did one test out near Charlotte and there were no body panels or anything. It was all raw, but we just had to prove that it worked because the way that the engine was placed in, because the diff had to sit up front, everything had to be quickly tested. So then the car came to LA to shoot for Jim Connor 7, got finished in the wee hours of the night. I went and shook it down in a dirty parking lot next to Hoonigan. Yeah. So I shook it down behind old Hoonigan in downtown old Hoonigan LA, in which means like LA. a parking lot like this big. So then the next day we started shooting Jim Connor 7. So I learned to drive this thing. There was no real practice time. I learned how to drive this car making Jim Connor 7. Yeah. So what's, what's your favorite moment in Jim Connor 7? I really love the water drop in LA River. Where you slide and drop the wheel in. Just because it just looks so It's like the crazy. easiest thing for me to do. Just visually, it looked good. And you didn't want to do it. You fought me on the radio on it. You're like, I don't want to put the car in the water. And I was like, it's What's a brand new car. The lowrider shot is probably one of the most iconic things. Randy's Donuts just looks good because the setup. Oh, that's my favorite shot. All time favorite moment for this car of all time. I think it probably we all agree. Three, two, one. Climb Evo Connor. Corner. Well, <laughs> this <guy. laughs> Everyone's doing the same thing except for him. <laughs> What'd you say? I said Evo Corner. That's like the move. Yeah, Evo I didn't know we were jumping so far ahead. Brian just wants to erase London. At some point, Ken and I, like, you know, we decided to see other people, and Ken went and dated the Top Gear folks, so they made a video in London. I don't know, I haven't watched it. Tell me if it's good. Maybe be careful. Well, so you took a car that was crazy, then you made it crazier to do the Climb Kana video. Like, was it like, hey, we need turbos? Like going into it, you're like, we need this already? Or did you try out? Well, no, because we, for Climb Kana, we knew the altitude mm -hmm. affects the power so much. Yeah. And with it being normally aspirated, it would rob it even more. So what do you do? You force the air in there to get the horsepower. So, and then, you know, because we didn't want to deal with intercoolers and stuff, methanol. And then one of my favorite things though was Jim Connor 10, doing all the things that we did in Jim Connor 10, but then we had the down day in LA where we shot all the slow-mo stuff because we had the phantom camera. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then we made a whole Christmas. Of shooting fire. <laughs> yeah, a whole Christmas yeah. video that's how long? It's an hour long or two hours long? And Brandon Steinekert, the drummer of Rancid, actually made holiday music for it, made five yeah. tracks, and it just repeats, but it's all edited to this slow-mo footage of the Hoonicorn spitting fire. We also did Toe Nuts that day as well. Yes. Because the Escort broke and we were waiting to fix it, so we were bored, and that's what happens when we're bored. So Toe Nuts is an F450 driving around with the Hoonicorn hooked up going the opposite direction, and I'm just doing an all-wheel drive burnout, tethered, <laughs> going around behind the F450. What's your top three moments? Uh, for me, Jim 7, when you leave the warehouse from the all wheel burnout and you come out like uh, curve to curve over the bridge before you get to the hot dog uh, cart. I super love that one. I will not lie though, the jump in London in the underneath, <laughs> pretty sick. I like that one. And then I wasn't Chris. Allowed to jump the car. And I will also say when Chris Harris did his ride along with you, he was looked genuinely terrified. Yeah. That's that a really was good really one. Good. I forgot about that. Chris that was a really good moment. Back, top three moments. Number three, Jim Connor 10, the reverse entry in Detroit. And where it like drops in the slow-mo and comes back. It just looks cool. That that and reverse it's, entry is it's all time. Yeah. Corner. Jim seven. I really like all of like the really big shots where you're coming in. Like basically right as you're coming off the 6th Street Bridge. 
Yeah. yeah, six feet bridge slide on like off the six feet bridge, right? Yeah. Like you can see the police cars that are like blocking traffic in the back, but it's just like a cool looking shot because there's this like gone in 60 seconds type feel. It's also like one of the most iconic film spots in all of Los Angeles. Yeah. So it was, now it's gone. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, Evo Corner. It's just cool. Vin, top three. Oh, I'm not playing this game. It's all sick. It doesn't like, there's no single moment to pick out. I mean, I got excited watching Ken smash through gears in a straight line on this drag strip. So like, it's the unicorn. Everything it's done is awesome. No pick. All right, uh, top three, I would say the chained up moment in the warehouse, because it was something that I kept wanting to do and Ken said, that's dumb but it actually made sense for the Mustang. I will give him credit, I will give him credit. That was Brian's idea. But it was something that made sense for the Mustang because we had to explain to an audience real quickly that it was all wheel drive. Like that's what made this thing special. And still to this day, like that still of seeing all the wheels spinning, I think it's actually a shot that Ron got. It's just still one of my favorite shots of this car. Then Evo Corner, it just, it's just like probably one of the best filming moments I've ever, ever had. You know what, I actually have to say, a weird one is the testing, and I wasn't even there for it. Like, seeing that come back was just like the coolest thing, because it was this thing that we built in our heads, and then all of a sudden to see it actually work and like slide in a way we never saw the car slide. I don't know, this car just makes me happy all the time. All right, so I'll do the final ones. Um, Randy's Donuts in LA, just because it was super rad to do that there. Iconic spot that I'd looked at most of my life. Uh, Evil Corner, of course, because I mean, that shot is like what I dreamt about going to Pikes Peak and mimicking what I saw in the 80s and early 90s of what rally cars did there on that mountain. And then the final thing actually was going to Detroit and finally getting to shoot in Detroit for Jim Connor 10 with the unicorn. And actually, the surface there was much slipperier than it looked. Like the rocks in the tarmac were super slippery. So driving on it was much more difficult and we caught some of that storytelling in the Jim Connor files. But the part that I really enjoyed was being out on Woodward Avenue, right in front of Slows, like a place that I've eaten so many times there in Detroit and doing moving donuts around you. There at, in that intersection. See, it all comes back together. <laughs> see, <laughs> see, I, I, I bring you down with blood. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bring, bring you back, back up. up. Yeah, yeah, that's how it keeps me here. It's an abusive relationship. <laughs> <laughs> so in saying that though, shouldn't we do some, some moving donuts one last time? One last time. I, I see a segue plugged in somewhere back there from some was, production guys. I'll, so. I'll dust it off if I got it. I'll dust you still it got off. the skill? I don't know, I don't know. I don't know if I can still ride one. Well look, let's, let's send it to its Viking funeral. I'll right, we'll go get the segue.
Yeah!